This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 1233. Everybody else is cheating, right? Not necessarily. By Dr. Gwendolyn Seidman of Loves.com. Hello, everybody. My name is Greg Audino. I am your host and narrator, and I'm here every single day to help you better your relationships through either the narration of helpful articles like today or in our listener Q&A episodes, which are each Saturday. Now, for today's work, we're going to check out a really great post from loves.com that is all about cheating. So, some of the numbers behind it and how we can rethink our attitudes towards it should we be tempted or have acted on temptation to cheat. Listen close, though, because there's something for everyone in this, and I'll explore that more in my commentary at the end. First, let's listen to the article and optimize your life. Everybody else is cheating, right? Not necessarily, by Dr. Gwendolyn Seidman of Loves.com. Most people believe that infidelity is a very bad thing. Yet, a majority of people admit that they have cheated on a romantic partner. In fact, studies have shown that about 75% of men and 68% of women have cheated at some point in a relationship. There are many reasons why people are unfaithful to their partners, but one possibility is that cheating may seem like a more acceptable behavior for us to engage in if we think it's commonplace and widely accepted. If we think that our own cheating is less frequent or severe than the norm, we'll be more likely to let ourselves slide and succumb to temptation. Everyone else is doing it, so if I have one little dalliance, that wouldn't be so bad. We often compare ourselves to others and compare ourselves to what we believe is typical behavior. According to social comparison theory, If we want to know where we stand on a particular behavior, we compare ourselves to our peers. So, if you want to know if your faithfulness to your partner is typical, you can compare yourself to others. Research has shown a correlation between our own cheating attitudes and behaviors and the faithfulness of our friends. A study conducted in the Netherlands found that the greater the proportion of their friends people believe to have cheated, the more likely they were to have cheated in the past and the more likely they were to say that they would be willing to cheat in the future. These effects were even stronger when asking about their friends' perceived attitudes towards cheating, rather than actual cheating behavior. That is, if we think our friends are cheating, or especially that our friends think it's okay to cheat, we're more willing to do so ourselves. Believing that our friends are unfaithful can make these behaviors seem both more desirable and more likely to occur. The researchers argue that these unfaithful friends are providing information about the merits of cheating, and that people assume, based on the frequency of friends' infidelities, that it must be worth the costs. It should also be noted that these findings are purely correlational. Therefore, it's possible that like-minded individuals simply befriend each other. Cheaters hang out with other cheaters. But it's also possible that we are influenced by our friends' attitudes. We're not just influenced by our friends, but also by whatever we believe is typical behavior among our peers. But sometimes our perceptions of the norms can be wrong. Pluralistic ignorance is when people believe that their own behavior is very different from the norm, when in fact, it is not. This can lead people to change their own behavior to make it closer to these perceived norms. We are likely to overestimate the prevalence and acceptability of infidelity for several reasons. Typically, it is unfaithfulness, not faithfulness, that makes the evening news. Scandals involving politicians and celebrities are frequently brought to our attention, whereas faithfulness is not. Another reason is that, if you have been relatively faithful, it's easier to think of examples of other people's infidelities than yours. If your only cheating experience was kissing an ex-boyfriend at a party, but you have some friends who have engaged in more frequent or severe infidelities, you may see yourself as especially faithful. In addition, people are highly motivated to view themselves positively, so we have a bias toward seeing ourselves as especially good moral people who would not betray our partners. In two studies, researchers asked undergraduate students about their own attitudes towards infidelity among students at their university. That is, the extent to which they felt it was acceptable for college students to cheat on their partners, as well as what they thought the average student's attitude was. They were also asked how often they had been unfaithful to a dating partner and were asked to estimate how often the average student had been unfaithful. These results showed that pluralistic ignorance about infidelity norms was quite common. The average student felt that their own attitudes towards infidelity were less favorable than the typical attitude, and that the typical student 
had cheated three times as often as they themselves had. These studies did not address whether those displaying pluralistic ignorance were more likely to eventually bring their own behavior in line with these false norms. But other research on pluralistic ignorance suggests this is likely to happen. For example, one study found that those who overestimated the amount of alcohol consumption on their campus eventually increased their own drinking to come closer to what they falsely believed was the norm, and that this pattern then reversed when they were educated about the true norms. This suggests that pluralistic ignorance of infidelity norms could follow the same pattern. Thus, even if no one in the peer group believes that cheating is okay, the fact that people falsely believe it's acceptable could make them more willing to give into temptation. So this could eventually lead to more cheating. So, if you are thinking that you might as well cheat because people do it all the time, or because most people think it's not so bad, you should think again. You're likely overestimating just how acceptable it is. You just listened to the post titled, Everybody Else is Cheating, Right? Not Necessarily, by Dr. Gwendolyn Seidman of Loves.com. Guys, now is the time to set your wellness routine into action and prioritize your health. And our sponsor, Care Of, gives you a vitamin routine that is personal, easy, effective, and constantly evolving. Care Of is a subscription service that ships high-quality, personalized vitamins and powders conveniently to your door every month. How does Care Of know which products are best for you, you ask? Well, the whole process starts with you taking a quick but thorough five-minute quiz about your diet, lifestyle, and health concerns. Honestly, Care Of has been great and helpful to me altogether, but I have to give a shout out to that quiz. It was honestly like talking to a nutritionist, and it was certainly the most fun I ever had taking a quiz. And I got exactly what I needed in the mail. Their recommendations were absolutely spot on. So, manage your stress this year the right way. For 50% off your first Care Of order, go to TakeCareOf.com and enter code ORD50. For 50% off your first Care Of order, go to TakeCareOf.com and enter code ORD50. That's ORD50. And a really important read from Dr. Gwendolyn today. We thank her for that. And obviously, it's a great read for those who have maybe had thoughts of cheating. But cheating aside, it remains a really good commentary for how prone we all are to latching on to behaviors that we see or believe others are engaging in. So again, whether or not you've cheated or been tempted to cheat, take this article with you and let it test your ability to really create and live by your own values. Hopefully seeing how infectious cheating is, okay, so something that's widely considered to be extremely unethical and something that, you know, the child versions of ourselves never would have envisioned our adult selves doing, we can be reminded of how easily swayed we can be by things that do and don't test our conscience. Obviously, we all want to be individuals, but it can be hard to maintain that when mixed with conflicting urges and a need to fit in. So, however this exists in your life, cheating or not, stay vigilant. I'll leave it at that. Time to get out of here, everybody. Thank you for listening today and hopefully being very reflective in light of this article. Wishing you a great rest of your day, and I will be back again tomorrow with another one. That's where your optimal life awaits.